Okay, this is a 2011 uh, Chevy Traverse, and I'm going to be installing a trailer hitch on this as well as the wiring today. And I believe this would also apply to the GMC Acadia and the Saturn Outlook. If not identical, it should be very similar procedure. Uh, the first thing you'll notice with the Traverse, it's never had a hitch on it, is it's got this uh, little cover right here, and that's going to have to come off. There's just these two little twist tabs here. And the rest, well, maybe they'll twist. And that's going to have to stay off because this right here is where the, re the receiver part of the hitch is going to be. Um, this is a high mile car. This car has uh, 100, well, it's got over 100,000 miles on it. And of course, the directions for the installation tell you to just install the bolts into these existing holes. But as you're going to see here, uh, let's see if we can focus in on there. I can't see putting a putting a bolt in there without cross threading that and getting it stuck. So what I've done is I've got a tap and I went through and I cleaned off the holes. You can see I already did that one. And I already did the other two on the other side. The other two location points for this hitch to bolt in are going to be right here. And sorry, right here. One here and one over there and they don't have the welded nuts up there they're just hollow holes uh, the kit came with a bunch of hardware it came with um, six of these bolts but in this application we're only going to use four we're going to use two on each end these two bolts are actually a, a little bit of a different size or American thread these are going to thread into these which we're going to slip up inside the frame um, in the last two holes I showed you where there's not captured nuts or welded nuts. These ones right here are a metric nut and they thread right into those existing nuts that are up in there. If, if your vehicle isn't, well I guess I'm in northern Michigan, so if, if you're in the south where your vehicle's clean there's no rust, it probably wouldn't apply to you, but anywhere else with any kind of miles or anything you're going to want to take a tap and clean the threads out. Uh, the, the paperwork here says that it's an M12 by 175 I always like to double check, so I got my tap set out and I measured the measured the bolt and I measured the uh, the thread pitch with one of these right here, and then I just went through and cleaned the threads out. I got one left to do, and then we'll be able to start the installation of this hitch. You could probably do it without cleaning the threads, although I don't recommend it because if the bolt breaks off, you're going to be in a world of hurt trying to drill that out. If the little, little bit of time it takes to clean the threads out with a with a tap. Uh, it's well well worth it. Time well spent. Okay, that looks good. I can see threads again instead of just rust. You will notice on this side the uh, the mounting holes for the for the hitch are right up here. I've already cleaned those two out with the tap. The exhaust was in the way, so all I did was I dropped it down. I just spray a little bit of uh, penetrating oil or lubricant of your choice on each one of these and pop them off. You can use a pry bar. I just use my work gloves. I use my hand and then there's one more right there. Right on top of the muffler. Make sure you support it. Make sure you support the muffler with something because there's nothing else supporting it from this point forward um, and you don't want to put that much weight and that much tension on the on the uh, um, flex pipe in front of the catalytic converter because you will break that. So let's go ahead and see if we can get the, the hitch up in here. I'm going to install these these two uh, nuts here up inside the frame so that when we get up to this point we will be able to put a little bend in these things so I can get, sneak them up in there. All right. One interesting thing to mention is the uh, bolts that go inside these nuts they're actually American thread. They're not the same thread, so don't get them don't get them mixed up here. The 
the dark, the black or the dark ones are all the uh, metric and the silver ones are the American threaded bolts. Okay. This really isn't too bad of an installation and anybody could probably tackle this job at home in their garage with a, with a jack. You wouldn't necessarily have to have a hoist to lift your car up to do this job if you don't mind working on your back. I don't prefer it, so... And the owner of this vehicle actually purchased this hitch uh, it was either off of Amazon or eBay, and it, and it wasn't very expensive from what she told me. So if a guy had one of these vehicles and wanted to save himself a few bucks, I would recommend uh, purchasing the hitch and installing it yourself. nuts got these neat little tabs on them, if I can ever get them to line up here. Let me see. What... I got these neat little tabs on there that allow you to manipulate the nut on the inside of the frame where you wouldn't be able to get to it otherwise. I'm turning these bolts in by hand and I would have never been able to turn them in uh, by hand without running a tap through those holes, I can guarantee that. More than likely they would have got cross-threaded and broke off up in there and caused me a world of hurt. Okay, one thing I want to point out before I get too far ahead of myself bolting these in. Um, it also came with, came with these two shims or spacers if you will that go in between the hitch and the uh, the frame of the car just to space it down a little bit like so Started, I'll be doing all right. Take some of the bend out of it. Maybe that'll help me out here. Trying to get it in the right place. Light would probably be nice too, wouldn't it? Okay, I've got the uh, hitch hung from the bolts. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up now. I'll start with the outside ones that are 18 millimeter. And 
and then the two in the center, for whatever reason, are actually pretty cool. I'm going to put you on hold here for a second until the compressor stops. Okay, we'll do the last two, two bolts. straighten the shim out on this side just because I'm not sure that it makes a difference but it makes a difference to me so of course I backed the bowl all the way out of that nut that was such a bugger to get started in the first place that's usually how it goes I don't think it makes a bit of difference, but it bothers me. It makes a difference to me. The hitch itself is there. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to put this uh, put this exhaust back together now. You want to make it easy on yourself? Put a little bit of lubricant on all all these little brackets here, so they slide together nice. muffler's back up there. You look over here, you can see when I was talking about, you'd be hard pressed to clean those holes or even get at them without lowering that exhaust down. So it only takes a minute or two, maybe five. Okay, I'm going to lower the car down and we're going to move on to the wiring now. Okay, now that the hitch is installed, we're going to go ahead and install the wiring. simple wiring really it's just a uh, what they like to call a plug and play you pull the tail lights out you plug these harnesses in place you know in in conjunction with the tail lights and then we'll run the wire to the other side and we'll tie the four pin connector up underneath uh, near the center of the hitch so we'll take a small screwdriver pop these tabs off there's two bolts in there don't they look like they're eight millimeter but they're not turns out they're seven Pull these two bolts out. The tail it should pull straight back. You want to use caution when you're removing the tail light because if you pull out on it, there's a there's an alignment pin in the front of the tail light. These are the only two fasteners that hold the tail light in place. So you don't want to pull it out this way, you'll break that tab. 
Okay, we'll pull the tail light out. Unhook this connector right here. Just squeeze this tab right here. Sometimes you gotta really, well, this one's full of dirt. Sometimes you gotta really work with these things to get them apart. All right, we'll set the tail light aside. Okay. <clears throat> the yellow side is the driver's side. The uh, green side is the passenger side. You got that, you'll get it right. If you, <laughs> if you screw that up, you're, you'll be confusing everybody behind you. This just simply plugs in place, just like that right there, and then this end will plug back into the tail light. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to uh, establish a ground point inside here, and we're going to route the rest of the wiring harness down between the, uh, the rear bumper fascia and the body of the vehicle, so we can route it underneath and over to the other tail light. I'm just going to clean the paint off the spot here so I can get it ground. I'll run a self tapper right there with my ground screw and then we'll put a little bit of paint or silicone or something over it so that we don't create a rust issue there later down the road. Okay, I'm gonna take out a. I'm gonna see if I can loosen this up a little bit. There's not a whole lot of space down here to get that wire fed down through there, so I'm gonna pop this. See if I can get in here and maybe get some. Yep, give me a little bit of a little bit of play here if I loosen these two up as well. Should give me enough room to get my wire going down in there. And I'm gonna, this is going to be the other side right here. This is going to be the passenger side. I'm going to speed that down in there. And then I'm going to, this is going to be at the center. This is your four pin wiring plug. I'm going to feed that down there as well. And then I'm going to lift the car up so that we can wire the, or run the wire across to the other side without having any issues. Alright, I'll put you on hold here while I lift the car up. Okay, I got the wire pulled through as you can see. Um, looks like there's one one little retaining tab right here and then one on the other side. I'm going to pull those out so I can tuck the wire up inside uh, the plastic here so that it's protected from uh, the harsh northern Michigan winters here. I don't want anything hanging down that's going to accumulate, accumulate ice on the wire and eventually snag it and pull it off of there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the wire up along the back side. Inside there's like an open spot, like a cavity, in between the plastic fascia and the actual steel bumper. And then I'll have the, uh, uh, the four pin connector uh, exiting right here, right near the hitch. And then of course I'll use the zip ties, I've got extra zip ties as well, and clean everything up. And then we'll run this green wire right here all the way over to the other side. And I've pulled the 
I pulled a piece of wire here. I don't know what you, you call it, a lead wire. I call it a fish tape, whatever you want. I've dropped this down from the taillight. I took the taillight out before I raised the vehicle up. And I dropped this wire down and we'll, uh, we'll tape our green wire to this and, and pull it back up through, fish it up into position here and finish up our installation. Okay, to finish up this installation, uh, we're going to create the ground. If you remember, I ground that little bit of paint off earlier. I just got a self-tapping screw. And I'm going to run that in there and we'll put some coating over the top of it. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and we'll plug in our tail light. Reinstall. Always, always, always verify the proper operation of the tail lights after you have it. tampered with them and had them unplugged because you, you hate to send it down the road to somebody and their lights not work so we're going to go ahead and plug our tail light into the new harness the new connector maybe maybe not Now, keeping in mind that fragile alignment pin right there, when you set the tail light back in, try to set the wiring, the extra wiring down so it won't get in your way. Alright. Okay, we'll put the screws in it and check the operation of the tail lights and that's it. We're done. I hope this video was helpful to somebody. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.